coming up in the Bahamas tonight, we go behind the scenes of the independent celebrations right here at Clifford Park. We've got all the details, so stay tuned. Coming up in the Bahamas tonight, the Durward Knowles arrives in the capital. And a national honor as 41 cultural heroes recognized as icons during the independent celebrations. The Bahamas Tonight, the national report starts now. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Every Day. Good evening everyone, I'm Keish Latterly. And I'm Andrew Knowles. Welcome to the Bahamas Tonight. Topping the news this evening, Prime Minister Perry Christie says the U.S. has interfered where it should not have. He was responding to the scathing U.S. State Department report on investment in the Bahamas. The report levied some heavy criticisms against the Christie administration and its style of governance, particularly in dealing with foreign investors. Well, the Prime Minister took another strike at the report, which he says was personal. The express dissatisfaction of the U.S. State Department's report continues. Prime Minister Perry Christie likens that published document, which levied heavy criticisms against this Christie administration, as to practicing double standards. I'm always surprised when um, they set a standard that they would not want anyone else to, to be able to, to go. I mean, for example, I mean... I, you should, I should be talking about how many failed promises President Barack Obama had. That, that, I mean, that, it just doesn't make any kind of sense to me um, that, that, that they would go there. And I actually used a word where a former ambassador was exposed in what he said about me. And what he said about me was parroting what was, the FNM was saying about me. And WikiLeaks. And, and, and that's why I, I, I used that. And I was astonished. Um, that they would allow themselves to go that far. Despite claims from the U.S. Embassy that the report is compiled and reviewed by experts in Washington, Mr. Christie maintains that he believes the report was a personal views of the author. And that view was jaundiced, um, and, and sadly to say, um, it was really, they, ought, they interfered where they ought not to, no matter what they say on that, um, that it was a mistake on their part to do that. And, and people have commented contemptuously um, about what they did and the way they did it. In fact, the Prime Minister says the report in no way reflects the kind of discussions he has been having with Charged Affairs' John Dinkelman. He maintains the U.S. still is a close friend of the Bahamas. We are allies. We are intertwined. Um, um, you know, to a great extent, we're kith and kin in terms of our relationship. And this too will pass. And, and we, we have some problematical matters, as other countries have with some of the policies of the United States of America in terms of um, listening and, and, and taping telephone calls or listening to telephone calls and trying to get an answer to it. And these are matters that I think we will talk frankly with our friends about. Um, I have always argued that we must never be adversarial because we have a relationship and during this Independence Week, Prime Minister Christie says, at the end of the day, the focus simply is the fact that the Bahamas and the United States remain friends. And that's a culture, he says, that will continue as long as he's at the helm of leading the country. Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. The second of nine Royal Bahamas Defense Force vessels purchased to man the country's borders arrived in the capital today. The HMBS Durward Knowles is expected to greatly increase the patrol capabilities of the Defense Force once it begins operation. Defense officials spoke of the importance of the latest acquisition today. We get that story tonight from Cleopatra Murphy. Named after accomplished sailor Sir Durward Knowles, the nearly $16 million HMBS Durward Knowles pulled into the Prince George Wharf shortly after 1.30 Wednesday afternoon, just in time for the nation's independence celebrations. The 142-foot vessel is the second of nine vessels constructed by Diamond Shipyards to increase patrol of the country's waters. Commodore Roderick Bowe says the last time the Royal Bahamas Defense Force received such a large acquisition was 14 years ago. He explains how the newest vessel will be used. We know that she is capable of uh, long-range patrol, um, shallow water patrols, 
she's able to um, intercept uh, persons at sea um, if we have to provide um, safety of lives at sea to provide um, making sure that persons who are trying to enter the Bahamas illegally persons who are trying to bring weapons or drugs in or trying to smuggle persons so we are happy to know that this platform is a very valuable asset. The Durwood Knowles, like the HMBS Arthur Dion Hanna, is one of four vessels that will be named after Bahamian legends. The 24 crew vessel has four women officers on board. Fresh from the three-week-long voyage from Holland, Captain Lieutenant Commander Christopher Darville says the ship is ready for patrol. She has a maximum range of over a thousand nautical miles. Uh, we again had two minor refueling stops crossing the Atlantic, uh, so she is true to form, uh, fit, fit to fight, and ready to join the uh, the fleet. Commodore Bo says that at 11:30 tonight, there will be a special treat for Bahamians at the Independence Celebration on Clifford Park. I think tonight you're going to see a fantastic uh, display of the ship's maneuverability. Um, and so we, we have a very good surprise for the Bahamian public and I think you'll all enjoy it. Commodore Bo says the vessel will soon take to the seas to begin its patrol missions. Cleopatra Murphy, ZNS, Network News. In other news tonight, a lot of work goes into preparing for Independence Morning's big show at Clifford Park. From vendors to security and even our very own ZNS staff have to make preparations. Well, our Janae and Noel Ferguson went behind the scenes tonight to find out just what it takes to make the Independence celebrations a success. The tents went up, cable lines pulled. Vendors dished out their wares and the stage has been set for the annual independent celebrations on Clifford Park. It's a mammoth task assembling various agencies for an event that started 41 years ago. And although activities are on a smaller scale than last year, it was still crunch time for organizers who promised a spectacular independent showing. Well, we are prepared, yes, we are prepared tonight. We want the best shows that you'll ever see ZNS do for independence. We are ready, we're getting ready. We're almost there. In about four hours, we'll be completed. We have to make sure every, every tent have, have a plug, every tent have lights, and the vendors make sure they have electricity what they need, either for microwave, deep fry, whatever. We have to just make sure everything in right shape and preparation so they could use it and have everything together. And would win an independent celebration out here at Clifford Park be without some food and drink? We spoke with a number of vendors who say they were here from about 6 o'clock this morning preparing for the big event. We have 70 vendors um, who are responsible, who are selling a variety of goods from food items to craft, even t-shirts. This is our first introduction of Tasty Teas. At an independent celebration, we normally do Bohemian food, but we decided to come out and see what the Bohemians think because, you know, this is the biggest gathering that we have, you know, all year. We will be selling the bling bling items, um, but the children really love. Last year was a hot spot, so we're going to do it again this year. This is my second year at the independent celebration, and I was very impressed from the last one. So now I came, now I decided to come out this year to celebrate the 40, 40, 40, 41 um, anniversary of the Bahamas. I came to uh, enjoy myself also to make some money, just walk up and down online and sell my popcorn, my cotton candy, my penis, until I, get, until I, until I, can't, get, until I um, can't walk no more. So I will be up and down all night until I blow. And by this time, you should be making your way down to Clifford Park. But if you're unable to do so, you can stay tuned to the ZNS Network for live coverage of the event. From Clifford Park, I'm Janae Noel Ferguson, ZNS Network News. 41 Bahamians considered icons celebrated during a special ceremony in Pompeii Square last evening. It's part of the country's 41st independent celebrations. Among those honored for their cultural contributions was the late King Eric Gibson, Gus Cooper, and Kayla Edwards. Veteran broadcaster Charles Carter and John Chippy Chipman were also honored. Dozens of friends and family members gathered to pay homage to those that have helped build this country. Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie spoke about the invaluable contributions of these many great Bahamians as well as his government's commitment to culture as well. The country has not done enough to honor these national treasures. 
The government has decided that the occasion of this independence anniversary in the year of, is the year of culture, and that it is a fit and proper and necessary to begin the process of identifying and commemorating and saluting all those people in our history and in our country who can be considered to be cultural warriors of this country. And in particular, to celebrate, pay homage, and express gratitude to a distinctive cadre of the first 41 personalities whose life, work, talent, and contribution distinguishes their performance, their creativity, and lifelong work. The Prime Minister announced that his government intends to make the event an annual one to ensure those Bahamians who have made a meaningful, meaningful contribution to the country are not forgotten. Youth Sports and Culture Minister the Honorable Dr. Daniel Johnson said we must continue to tell this country's story by honoring those that have helped to build the nation. Well, this is the most important thing that we can do right now in this stage in our history. It's who we are, what we do, who we belong to, the heirs and successors to this great story. Art, poetry, dance, music, the creation of a unique group of people. And these are the storytellers. They tell our story in their own way, through their own medium. You know, James Catlin, through drama, through comedy, through his perspective. Stan and, 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 and Jackson Burnside, Buller and Gus Cooper, Maureen Duvalier, Ronnie Butler, Paul Mears, George Simonet. The list goes on and on. We're going to reintroduce this next generation to that story. That's the disconnect. Once they know what the story is, we got ourselves a major revolution again. A cultural revolution of the mind and the heart. A Haitian couple hauled before the court on drug charges. We've got the details straight ahead. This segment of the news is brought to you by Shell Quality Fuels.